allowed me to give a talk with this short notice. Um, um, thank you all. Um, so be, let's begin with the last talk of the workshop of electro, in electromagnetic effects in strong interacting matter with a work that doesn't have magnet, uh, magnetic effects, because why not? Uh, I will talk today about quarkionic matter and in the excluding volume model uh, with some ingredients extra, so excluding volume and more. Uh, for this, I will motivate the reason why it's interesting to study quarkionic matter. Um, and I will give you a short description of what is quarkionic matter and then introduce for you the excluding volume model. And then I will present an expansion of the works made by Laurie McLaren and Shimoji Sen and Kisan Gyeong uh, with an extra flavor, a strange square, and uh, and, uh, and some final remarks. Um, so we all here know that there is huge importance in studying QCD under extreme conditions, temperature, finite density, magnetic fields, of course, because they play an important role trying to understand the transitions, uh, the different phase transitions as occurs in the early universe. And because of that, it is uh, and something that is on the recent interest to reproduce this condition on these big experiments, heavy ion collision experiments. But those conditions can be also observed on some compact stars like the neutron stars or magnetars. And all these kind of extremes condition, they are in the highlight topics on physics, high energy physics these days. Um, because of that, one way to illustrate the different phases that the strongly interacting matter can have is by sketching this in what is called a phase diagram. You have different options of what is the axis that you want to choose. You can have an axis of temperature, an axis of density, um, an axis in magnetic fields, of course. But by the meaning of the, this talk, I will focus on the high density axis because there's when the neutron star are located, and this is one of the motivations for trying to study quarkionic matter. So because of we are interested in studying neutron stars, uh, one way of doing this is by, by, the, by means of the observation of the recent gravitational waves, in particular this one that is not as new as I should. I should actually change that, my apologies. Uh, but this kind of observation can give us in, uh, important clues to understand the cold and dense matter. Because uh, from this data, we can uh, try to understand how the, the neutron star behave, particularly in the cores, by the tolman oppenheimer wolkoff equations. And once that we have that, we have a lot of space to work. We can change that description and talk instead of the T of E equations to, to start to t uh, talk about uh, in, in using the equation of state for the dense QCD matter. Um, the advantage in doing this is uh, we can understand uh, how the matter behaves, for example, when we are in very high densities, right? When, sorry, very low densities. When the matter um, behaves, uh, and it's well understand because we can use nuclear models to study that, and those are uh, well understood. On the other hand, we can, we can study the very high density limit by studying perturbation theories uh, or just a free gas of quartz or some studies like that. And those sectors are also well understood. The thing is that when you, have, uh, when you take the observations for the neutron stars, it seems that the behavior doesn't, it's not related to one of them. It's, it's, in some sense, when you study uh, quark matter in the high density regime, the question is then is it stiffer than the one that you will obtain for a nuclear uh, model. And in the other hand, a low density is when you have a nuclear model, you have a, stiff, a softer uh, question of state than the one that it came for, for quark matter, for just quark matter. So in order to 
have a better understanding. Oh, sorry. And another advantage of st st studying this in terms of the TOV and the equation states is that they can give you some insight about the transitions that occur in, this, in, this, uh, in between the densities, not too high nor too low, depending on the, of, of the behavior of this, for example. If the equation of states has some discontinuity, that means that uh, there is some kind of first sort of transition. That same discontinuity can be seen as a knee in the T of E equation. Or we can also study in terms of the sound's velocity. That will mean that you will have a big discontinuity in the behavior of the sound velocity. Or if you're just thinking in a model that is first describe things in terms of nuclear matter, and then at, uh, at the saturation density, you start thinking of quarks. This kind of discon uh, you will have this kind of jump. I mean, not jump. Sorry, it's like a uh, this rough change here, but it's continuous, right? So it's just rough, and this rough can be seen in a, in a equation of uh, uh, in the TOV as a smaller radius that is expected from the neutron stars. On the other side, you can see that as a, a jump in the speed of sound. So by the observations that we have, we know that it should be something more close to this behavior. When you have a soft transition between uh, nuclear mass, uh, nuclear matter, and uh, quark matter, so that is related to a jump, uh, peak on the speed of sound, obviously lower than one. Um, uh, so trying to say the same again, but using the, the observation for the uh, gravitational waves and other models. Uh, it, is ho it is hoped that the question of states or the TOV will reproduce neutron stars that are at least two solar masses with radius between uh, uh, lower than 13 or 14 kilometers. And because of this, uh, it is better to try to use a model that can have a, an increase on the sound velocity uh, uh, at low densities, but not nuclear low. But still, you will be able to obtain the conformal value of the value for the quark matter at higher densities. So do you guys have any suggestions? I will say, well, let's just introduce the quarkionic matter. This idea was introduced by Larry McLaren and Pisarsky, Robert Pisarsky in, I don't know the year, sorry. Uh, uh, and what they say is that let's just think at this phase of dense matter and argue for a large NC behavior and do some approximations to calculate some, some uh, to see how it behaves. So once that you are in, in a large NC approximation, the, the device screening from the Ulons, it's only important and very, at very high densities. This means that uh, it's constant uh, during the, for all temperatures. And the quartz, they are not affected until very, very high densities. On the other side, uh, the quark loop is suppressed by this term here, because the coupling is also the, uh, depending on the, in, in the inverse way of the, on the NC, on the colors. So the quark loop is suppressed by this large NC. What it means that uh, the quarks are more important when the, when, the density, when the density is high. And this means that the, the screening mass for the quarks is of the order or the chemical potential. And uh, so you can see more from here. So this, fac, uh, this factor, G squared, is depending on over 1 over NC. So these keep constants for or, uh, sorry, this is the factor that keep uh, suppressed for the quark loop. And there is, uh, so the, uh, but you still can use these uh, large NC models for QCD if, if you are in a condition when the, uh, where the density is high enough to, to, uh, um, um, Sorry, to be higher than the confinement scale. Confinement scale. So by lattice analysis, we know that uh, at low densities, 
the chiral restoration and the confinement occurs always at the same time. But it's expected that maybe after at higher chemical potential, there will be a separation of these two phases. And that we allow to have chiral restoration, but without, uh, well, still some confinement. Sorry, the other way. Have, have the confinement without losing the, the restoration, the chiral restoration. So how we model this? So what we have is that we can start with a nuclear, only nuclear interaction, um, Fermi uh, sphere at low density, right? So the energy of the, maximum energy of the Fermi surface will be lower than the confinement scale. Then eventually you increase the density, oops, yeah, what it changed the, the maximum energy Fermi, and in some point between the confinement scale and NC, the confinement scale, you will start to, you, you will start to produce quartz in the inner of the Fermi surface. And, and these quartz will be interacting as a free quartz, but the quartz on the shell, they will be, uh, the interaction will be more important at long distance. This means, this means that these quartz will be confined and will start to form nucleons. And eventually, if you keep increasing the density or the maximum energy for the Fermi surface, Fermi sphere, sorry, you will just restorate the, you will, the confinement will disappear and you will just have quarks. Um, this means that the total baryon density will have two different kind of behaviors. This means that the, uh, after some, the increasing of some chemical potential, the confinement state will be, uh, will, they will be enhanced, and this means that the pressure will be increased rapidly. So it's not like you have a first sort of transition or something that is smoother than that. So how can we introduce this in a kind of toy model or first try, let's first try model. Uh, for this, we can use the hardcore, uh, the excluding volume model that it, what it thinks is that you, you think that your nucleons are uh, made of a hardcore volume given by the hardcore radius. And this means that your nucleons are dense in some way. These interactions are more important in the core. And there is some free space for them to interact. So with that in mind, you can calculate the density uh, on the excluding volume given by the difference between the volume of the core and the total volume. Then you calculate the density in that case, and from there you can calculate the energy density, the chemical potential, and the pressure. Once that you have all of that, you can do the same for the quartz, calculate the density, the energy density, but you need to introduce, in a way, this shell kind of structure. So in this case, let's just do it by hand. Let's think, think that the nuclear part is only important for the outer shell of the quark and the total surface of Fermi. Fermi surface. And on the other hand, the quartz will be only interacting from the center of the Fermi surface until the shell of the quartz. By doing this separation, you reproduce this kind of uh, two phases Fermi surface that you need to describe quarkionic matter. And with that in mind, you can calculate the density for those both, both cases, the quark and the nucleons, the energy for both the quartz and the nucleons. Notice that in order to avoid some problems with the infrared uh, divergence that can occur here, we just implement this cutoff to keep control of the, of the interactions at low moment. Um, this was the work made by Kisan, uh, Shrim, Moji, Sen, and Larry. And they found that, uh, well, they need to be careful in the way that they, they fix this cutoff in order to have uh, sounds velocity that make sense. Because if they don't fix that in the proper way, they will have speed of sounds higher than one. But once that they figured that out, they kind of reproduce the spec behavior for the speed of sounds in the sense that they will have a, a, a peak on the speed of sounds that is even higher than the conformal value, one third, and eventually go low and keep and sustain the conformal value. So this is in good agreement with the sound velocity obtained from the equation of state. So seems that this quarkionic matter is a great uh, candidate for trying to uh, study the, 
the mixes of the matters that is inside the nuclear stars. So let's just try to improve these models by, I don't know, let's add one strange quark using this same excluding volume model. So for, in order to do that, we just think, have to think that the, all the, the baryonic, uh, well, the nuclear matter is the protons, the neutrons, and the hyperons. And for that, we will think that uh, the hyperon will have a different um, repulsion, no, no, different interactions uh, compared to the protons, to the neutrons. It's not, it's not that they have the, uh, it can be higher, it can be stronger or uh, weaker. But let's just assume that it's different. And what that we have that is the same process. You calculate the energy density for the nucleon part from the outer of the shell of the quartz until the maximum Fermi surface that you have. And the same for the quartz from the minimum value of the Fermi surface to the, to the, to the top to the quartz surface. And we introduce this function that it will be the same effect of doing this infrared cut. It's just doing it in a different way. And once that we have that, we need to implement boundaries that tell us how the quartz will, com will condense in nucleons and in doing that in order to have these protons, neutrons, and hyperons. So we just use, we call the confined quarks to, to those to that will eventually form neutral matter, uh, nuclear matter. And we give this, this condition. Uh, why we are trying to say that we have different interactions from the hyperons that for the nuclear and the protons. Because, well, it, it is known that the, for the nuclear, regular nuclear matter, the interaction is of the order of 0 0.26, 0 0.6 Fermis. That's when the repulsion starts. But for the, lamb, for the hyperons, it's, it's of the order of 7.7 .7 Fermis, but there is a lot of, of or, or, uh, error bars here. So we have like a, a, some freedom here to, you know, in a, in a sense, to, because we don't actually know the value. But I mean, it can be higher, can be the same, can be lower. But let's just do all of them and see the behavior of all of them. Um, so now I introduce you all the ingredients to you guys. We have the quark matter, the nuclear matter, the density, the energy for those, the boundary conditions for the inner shell. So let's now generate this uh, shell-like structure by minimizing the energy so this will be dynamically obtained. We are not introducing by hand the values of the shell. We are obtaining that by minimizing the energy densities. And this, and because at the end we have strange quarks, down quarks, and up quarks, we need better equilibrium conditions to have the proper behavior. And of course, because we have protons, neutrons, and and strange quarks, they, we need some kind of ruling for the uh, charge. So let's keep just these constraints for the hyperons, the S quarks, all the quarks, all the protons, try to emulate the actual phenomenology. And what we obtain is that depending on the, if we are talking about uh, a stronger uh, repulsion from the hyperons or a lower, weaker uh, repulsion, we obtain uh, the densities for every particle. What, what it, this means is that once that the value is different from zero, you start to have in that particle. This means that you will start with mainly nucleons and protons, and eventually a lamb, uh, lambda hyperon can appear. But before that, maybe some quarks can start to appear. In. So in this part of here, for example, you actually have a shell-like structure when the inner core is quarks and the outer shell is nucleons. Yes. Mm, not precisely because this is a zero temperature. So in order to, to see that, you will introduce temperature and then go to this to the area that when that splitting can occur. Because that, I mean, it it, it is thing that it, it's maybe after the what it is the critical point but we don't actually know the location of when that can still happen. But if we manage to 
have a model for quaternion matter that introduces temperature, it will be possible to, to keep the track of that. Of course, you will need to introduce as well the confinement in the theory. So, I mean, this is like the base ground. We, need, we have to start building from there. But we have the, the ingredients to do that. Oh, so once that you start having these behaviors, we can calculate the equation of state from, from the density and see how the speed of sound behaves for those different, for these different cases. In, in this case, we are thinking about the, diff the two different kinds of repulsions and two different uh, saturation densities. And what we can learn from here is that if you notice the points when the quark start to appear and also when the hyperons uh, start to appear, those correspond to these kind of humps. So every hump corresponds to a new species of quarks. So it seems that the fact that you pass from nuclear, just nuclear matter, to start having quarks is, uh, is, uh, is definitely a sign of these peaks on the speed of sounds. That is what is, was expected. Um, so yeah, now this is like an extension for the usual speed and volume model, but including strange, strangeness, sorry. Um, because at the, at the end, the purpose is try to see if this match in a way with the neutron stars. Let's try to implement a, a lower density a, a model for the nuclear matter to inject it to our quarkionic matter model in order to obtain the, the TOB equations and see where, what is the maximum value of the mass, mass that we can obtain. In doing that, we actually managed to obtain the two solar masses that was suspected for the neutron stars and a decent value for the radius. So in a, in a sense, this is a great approach to the quarkionic matter is a great approach for what the neutron star's behavior can be. Uh, so some final remarks. Um, by analyzing the gravitational wave data, we, be, we can provide important insights about the properties of dense QCD matter. We can extend the student volume model by uh, to isospin, isospin symmetric matter, two flavor matters, by including strange baryons or quarks S, and address the implication for that in the neutron stars. Uh, of course, the goal of all of this is to try to have an extension for finite temperature and also magnetic fields, why not? To try to complete this phase diagram that is there. And, of, uh, and maybe see if there is some uh, changes on the behavior of the neutron stars, or even for magnetic fields. And that's all. Thank you for watching. Uh, thanks. Uh, simple question. Uh, first, I want to rephrase if I understand it right. Uh, in the, when you go between the hadronic matter and the quark matter, in the middle, you ba basically get the transition and the uh, stiffening of the equation of state where the speed of sound becomes large. Yes. Do you have a clear sort of physical intuition why that stiffening happens precisely uh, during this so-called crossover, if you wish? Yeah, I mean, I would say that the fact that the, the quartz starts to appear is related to some boost in the pressure, right? Like they, they, they kind of push the nucleons away. But I mean, in the sense that the, the interactions in the other shell of the quartz is more, they are more important, right? So, the, no, sorry, the long distance interactions are more important in that area, right? So the confinement in a way that boosts the pressure in some sense. And that's big on that. Uh, thanks, Saul. Uh, just a short question. Uh, what was the criterion for fix the infrared cutoff? Uh, the infrared cutoff, what, what was the criterion to fix it? No, um, yeah, 
uh, just to, to try to, 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 uh, to maintain under control the speed of sound because it was higher than one. But it's, uh, it has to be in a scale uh, uh, that uh, it's uh, related to the, uh, it's, that maintains the, the, Fermi, the Fermi energy lower than the scale of confinement. But besides that, it's, it's kind of free. So regarding uh, <coughs> uh, Igor's question, so the, what you say is actually the interpretation according to the paper by uh, Reddy and McLaren. But what you, what you have in your model is, I think, a bit different. So whenever you have excluded volume effect, uh, you eventually have some blowing up behavior of the speed of sound. Uh, that is simply because, uh, because you have uh, the excluded volume effect, uh, eventually it is impossible to put more and more density and density is saturated while uh, the pressure increases. So the uh, speed of sound anyway uh, mm. the goes up. And so that is not the sign of the, the, the onset of a quark matter, but that is actually where the hadronic model breaks down. And then eventually the quark degrees of freedom uh, should come in. And my, my, my question is, uh, then uh, where quark matter uh, should appear is controlled by some parameter, yes. but I didn't understand how it was uniquely fixed in your model. Yeah, so no, the, the peak position, essentially. Yes, yes, no, that, that's, that's, this is like the, try to introduce the idea still. What we want to do is eventually uh, uh, have a description that allows us to obtain the, the quarkionic matter uh, as a two different fields, like, and then uh, obtaining by. Yeah, 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 I understand, I understand. But the point is, the point is, uh, so the some, how to say, onset point of your uh, film energy or whatever, uh, so how, how did you fix it? Uh, it, it should be some model parameter, right? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yes, and, and then the principle or to fix it. Uh, how, how did you fix it? I mean... Uh, what kind of a physics uh, information from experiment can fix it? That's my question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I mean... Uh, it controls the peak position, and so the peak position is sensitive to that parameter. And so if you want to make any prediction, uh, you have to have some principle yes. uh, to fix it, uh, not, not, not just by hand. No, no, yeah, I, I mean, it, it, the value of the saturation core, the core, the, sorry, the radius for the core density, it is what the, fix the position of the peak. It's yeah. really, uh, so we use the, like, a physical value for that core density. Wait, 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 physical value of what? Well, we use the set, sorry, uh, uh, the value for the saturate density of, the, of a nuclear, of a nucleus. So uh, 16 Fermi square, oh, no, sorry, cube. For the, so, I can. Nuclear saturation density, do you mean? Yes. Oh, but, but, uh huh. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. <clears throat> so I have a related question. I mean, if you think about uh, the question of a state of a gas, either a classical or quantum gas, usually when you do uh, the, the expansion in powers of uh, the density or volume, you get what is called the virial expansion. Mm -hmm. And typically the second virial coefficient the sign of it will immediately indicate if the effective interactions are either, either repulsive or, or attractive. Mm -hmm. So have you tried a criteria based on the virial coefficient, for example, for a model? No, no, I, I didn't try that, but I think it's something that can be done. But at the end, we, we have repulsive interaction all the time. We don't change the interactions. We just change the value of it, for depending on the nuclear matter that you have. Hi, thank you for the talk. Uh, in the speed of sound, you, f you show like there are several uh, peaks. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the physical meaning of that? Is several transitions, something like that? Oh, uh, so th those peaks correspond to like a new quark that is appearing. So when this, uh, the down quark starts to appear, it's the first peak, then corresponds 
that dense. I mean, you can see from here and here. So like uh, green, uh, sorry, down quad is over uh, almost 3.5, like almost 3.5. And then go, you go on like, uh, uh, also the lambda is one of the peaks. Lambda is over a little higher than that. And then lambda is a zero. Oh, so, sorry, that's the, that, this one is the blue. So it's down, lambda, up, and strange. Yeah, but you have several peaks, but. Yes, oh, sorry. So these are different curves. I didn't say that. So, if you, so this, I, I use the same colors. This is only for one specific case. So those corresponds to only one of these lines. So when you change the parameters, you can see from here that you have, uh, in this case, you don't have lambda, right? So if you go, oh, if you take that curve, that case here uh, is the red one. The red one has less peaks because you don't have lambda. So every peak corresponds to a, a new quark or lambda that is showing in the density. So it just starts start forming. Let's thank the speaker again. And now I invite Alejandro to have a, to present the